hinder the blessing of God, the voice of God, the favor of God, the counsel of God. After this service, we are giving way for God in the name of Jesus. Father, this morning we ask that once again you speak to us in a way that only you can. Open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear, open our hearts to gain understanding, and let your word inspire us to go forth and begin to operate in fullness of dominion. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And the saints of God shout a big amen. amen. So last week we began to look at developing dominion mentality. You and I know that this is our year of kingdom dominion. God is saying, as a matter of fact, it's not just a year of kingdom dominion, but it's a decade of kingdom dominion. Because for the next 10 years of this ministry, we're going to be focusing on raising men and women into a place of authority, into a place of dominion, into a place of influence, into a place of impact, into a place of relevance, so that we can begin to cause the scripture to become a reality. Revelation chapter 11 and verse number 15, the word of God declares that the kingdoms of this world has become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. So there is coming a time when the entire kingdoms of this world will become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. But you and I have to be the instrument in the hand of God to make that to become a reality. We already know there is a prophetic destiny for us as a church, there's a prophetic destiny for the body of Christ. In Isaiah chapter 2, from verse 1 to 3, we'll see how that the Bible says, In the last days, the mountain of the lost house shall be exalted on the top of all other mountains. So there are different mountains. But the mountain of the lost house shall be exalted on the top of all these other mountains, and all nations shall flow into it. So God is saying that there's coming a time, and we are in that time, we are in that season when the church of God, when the people of God will rise up and begin to operate in the fullness of God's plan for their life. Malachi chapter 4 from verse 1 repeats the same thing, that in the last days the mountain of the lost house shall be exalted on the top of all other mountains. So we as children of God need to understand that God has a dominion mandate for us. God has prepared dominion for us. God has ordained us to walk in dominion in every aspect of our lives. But if we are going to walk in dominion and experience all that God has in store for us, then we must develop dominion mentality. Now let's look at two parts of the Bible as we move on this morning. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1 and 2, and Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 22 to 25. Deuteronomy chapter... 7 verses 1 and 2. In Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whether thou goest to possess it, and has cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Evites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. So God is saying that, look at the beginning, when the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land. So God will bring you into the land, you will possess the land, and has cast out many nations. So these nations, they are more, they are mightier, but they shall be overcome. They are more, they are mightier, but they cannot stop you. He says, then you will do what? You will still enter the land, you will still possess it. So people of God, if you are going to walk in dominion, if you are going to experience dominion, you must realize that there will be oppositions. You must realize that that territory you want to possess, that area you want to possess, somebody is there right now. Somebody is occupying it right now. There are powers occupying it right now, but for you to be able to go and confront those powers, to be able to take possession, you need dominion mentality. Now let's look at the next one, Deuteronomy. Okay, verse 2 says, And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Turn to the number and say, No mercy. Say, No mercy. So listen and listen well. God is not a man that he should lie. The prophetic destiny is very clear. 
the oppositions are there, but they are not powerful enough to stop you except you stop yourself. So what we are focusing on is how you cannot stop yourself. Because the Bible says uh, that they did not retain him in their hearts. They limited the only one of Israel. Many of us are limiting what God wants to do because of our mindset. Now let's look at Deuteronomy 11 from verse 22 to 25. Deuteronomy 11 from verse 22 to 25. For if you shall diligently keep all these commandments, which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him, you see the conditions. Then will the Lord drive all these nations from before you. And you shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourself. So you see now, he says, if you can make God your ultimate, love him, serve him, make him an him alone, your source, make him an him alone, your focus. He said, then all these nations, they are more, they are mightier, but they are coming down. Now look at the next verse. Every place where the soul of your feet shall tread shall be yours. From the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea shall your coast be. Finally, there shall no man be able to stand before you. For the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that you shall tread upon as he has said unto you. Can you see that? So, people of God, God has done his part. God has sorted it out. But are we ready? You remember that in John 14, from verse 1, when Jesus was leaving, he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. He said, and when I'm true, I will come back and bring you to that place. So the problem is not about God preparing the place. But the problem is, are we prepared for the place that God has prepared for us? God has prepared great things for us. As a church, as a people, as believers. We are in a season of prophetic fulfillment. Everything around is working together to ensure that this counsel of God comes to pass. But many of us are stopping the hand of God. So last week we saw how that leaders from each tribe were chosen the leaders were chosen to go and spy the land but they came back and said yes we saw the land yes the fruits are there yes there's milk and honey yes god did not lie to us we even came with the proof that god is not a liar but we are not able we are not able to possess the land we are not able to do what god has called us to do but the bible says that joshua and caleb separated themselves and told the people, I said, look, I'm not part of this group, oh, I am able. Turn to everybody and say, I'm able, I'm able. to possess my possession. Possess. Tell everybody, say, neighbor, I'm able, I'm able. To, be to be all that God wants me to be. So we established the fact last week, Sunday, that if you are going to have dominion, you must have dominion mentality. You must make sure that you see yourself the way God sees you and not the way the enemy sees you. And then we wrapped it all up by establishing the fact that dominion is an inside job. Dominion is an inside job. Dominion is something that happens on the inside. Proverbs 23 verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. They said, we saw ourselves like grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Now we also saw Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Ephesians 3.20, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all we ask or think according to what? According to the power that works in us. So dominion is an inside job. If you are going to have dominion, it's something that must happen inside, in your spirit, in your mind. If it does not happen inside, it cannot happen outside. And that's why when you look at the scripture, you discover that the emphasis of the Bible is always about you becoming something on the inside before you begin to take action on the outside. You remember that in John chapter 3, when Nicodemus came to Jesus, the question he asked Jesus was, what must I do? What must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus if he was to answer that question, he would have said, do this, do this, do this, do this. But what did Jesus say? 
He didn't say you must do. He said, What must I do? Jesus said, Except a man be. So his own emphasis was, What must I do? Jesus' emphasis is, Whatever you do does not matter. It is who you are that produces the results. So, except a man be, he cannot. So, until you become a man of dominion, you cannot enter dominion. So, dominion is an inside job. It's something that happens inside you. You must see yourself healing the sick before you can heal the sick. You must see yourself writing a check of one million before you can write that check. You must see yourself building a house before you can actually build the house. You must see yourself running a conglomerate before it can happen. You must see it first. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Did you miss any of our TV broadcast? Don't you worry. Watch our online TV. Log on to youtube.com forward slash TrueCounts TV and watch inspiring messages of Pastor Lumide Emmanuel. View life transforming messages on our TrueCounts TV channel. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel on youtube.com forward slash true counts TV. Watch, follow, view, and subscribe on your mobile phones, tablets, and PC. True counts TV promoting the kingdom of God. Listen, as we go into part two, what do you think was going on in the mind of the chicken that made him to be so confident that you this dog go, you are coming down? That is dominion. Man. Hello. For the dog to believe that you, you can kill me. What the, huh, huh, and the dog, what? Listen. You are not a chicken. You are a human being created in the image of God with God on the inside of you. If a chicken can make a dog to run, what is that thing that can stand before you? So listen, you need dominion mentality what is mentality is a mindset is a thought pattern is a way of thinking is a perception is a world view so to have dominion mentality means to have a mindset that can never be defeated a mindset of I win always a mindset of I can do all things a mindset of God is able through me a mindset of nothing is impossible. A mindset of I will be what God says I will be. That is dominion mentality. When I saw that yesterday, I was like, wow. Is this own video or for real? Hello. Now, let's begin to break down this message. Why is it very difficult for people to have dominion mentality? What are the things that shapes the mindset of people? Because if you are going to solve a problem permanently, the Bible says the axe is at the root of the tree. So if you want to solve a problem permanently, what do you do? You go to the root of the problem. So what shapes the mindset of people? If we are able to find out what shapes the mindset of people then we can go to that route and begin to make adjustments so in the next two weeks we want to look at the seven mentality shapers the seven things that shapes the mindset of people so that we can begin to do what go back into the route and begin to rework and re-engineer our mind number one the first thing that shapes the mindset of people is their upbringing. 
their upbringing. Every one of us came from a family. Every one of us were brought up from a family. And whether you like it or not, your upbringing has a lot to do with your mindset. Your upbringing has a lot to do with the way you think. Your upbringing has a lot to do with the way you behave. Your upbringing has a lot to do with your beliefs. When I was growing up, my mother does not believe that only women should cook. My mother believes that all the children in the house must be responsible. So she has a timetable. She has a roster. And whether you are male or female, you have your own day to sweep. You have your own day to wash plates. You have your own day to cook. So because of that upbringing, I was not born again. I didn't know Jesus, but I grew up with a mindset that anybody can cook. So today, I cook. And I cook more than a lot of women can cook. Now, why am I cooking? Why am I able to cook? Is it because I'm born again? No. Is it because I'm a pastor? No. It's because I had an upbringing that endorsed that way of thinking. And when I now got born again, it just so happened that it fell in line with the will of God. Do you understand? So there are many things we believe. There are many things we practice that is not right, that is limiting us. But the only reason why we continue to do it is because we tell ourselves that's the way I was brought up. So turn to the neighbor, say neighbor. How were you brought up? Turn to the neighbor, say neighbor. How were you brought up? Now let's look at the Bible. In G let's see the story of Gideon. In Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. Gideon, Judges 6, 14 and 15. Gideon was a man that God had a great plan for. But when God appeared to connect him to destiny, Look at what happened. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hands of the Midianites. I have not I sent thee. Look at verse 15. And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh. And even in that my family, oh, that poor family man has said, I am the least in my father's house. What has that got to do with what God has said? God said, I'm going to use you to save Israel. Go, and I'm with you. Even though God was telling him, I'm with you, I will give it to you, his background, his upbringing, was he fighting his dominion. Listen and listen well. Do you know that there are many of us that God has prepared great things for? But every time we move towards it, something tells us, not be person like you. Something tells us, this is not for people like you. Something tells us, ah, you better don't go and do more than yourself. Something tells us, hey, relax, oh, it's not people like you. And we keep hearing this evil voice. We keep allowing our past to hinder our future. But I'm happy to announce to you, in the name that is above every name, that right now, you are in the theater room of heaven. Yeah. And God is working on your life. Yeah. And you will not live here the same. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Now question, why was it difficult for Gideon to be able to enter into his destiny? It was his background. But look at verse 25 of the same chapter. Verse 25. 
And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that thy father had, and cut down the group that is by it. So listen, many times, the reason why it is very difficult for us to break free from our upbringing is because there are altars and powers that are enforcing that pattern. There are altars and what and powers that are enforcing that pattern. There are altars that have said, this is the way you will go. And anytime you want to walk contrary to the agenda of the altar, they fight you. In the name that is above every name, every altar manipulating your life, any power limiting your destiny, I command them to break in the name of Jesus. I command them to break in the name of Jesus. I command them to break in the name of Jesus. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Did you miss any of our TV broadcast? Don't you worry. Watch our online TV. Log on to youtube.com forward slash truecounts TV and watch inspiring messages of Pastor Limited Emmanuel. View life transforming messages on our True Counts TV channel. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel on youtube.com forward slash True Counts TV. Watch, follow, view and subscribe on your mobile phones, tablets and PC. True Counts TV, promoting the kingdom of God. Number two, the second thing that shapes your mindset is your environment. Your environment. Your environment. In Genesis chapter 12, from verse 1 to 3, Genesis chapter 12, from verse 1 to 3, God called Abraham. And when God called Abraham, what did he tell Abraham? He said, come out. Come out of your father's house. Come out of that location. Come out. Now, why was God telling Abraham to come out? God is saying, I have a plan for you. I have an agenda for you. But that place you are in, that environment will limit that plan. That environment will fight that agenda. So come out. So that I can do what I want to do in your life. By the time you get to chapter 15, you see the same principle in chapter 15. Verse 5. Genesis 15, 5. When God had finally brought him out and promised him a child, he sat down and he was thinking, Oh God, I'm a old man. You promise you will give me a child. It's not possible to have a child though. I'm old though. Even my wife has crossed menopause. When he was sitting down in that environment of doubt, that environment of unbelief, that environment of limitation, God said, come out. Look at verse 5. And he brought him forth abroad and said, look now towards heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them, and he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. What was God doing? Change your environment. Change your environment. Listen and listen well. There are some environments you subject yourself to that cannot help you to fulfill destiny. So you must make up your mind that I am not going to allow my environment to limit my destiny. I am not going to allow my environment to limit my destiny. Listen and listen well. Many years ago, I moved into an estate. It was a duplex. When I moved into this estate, I did not have a generator. 
when I moved into this estate, I did not have DSTV. When I moved into this estate, I have never driven a brand new car before. But when I moved into this estate, the very first week, when I entered the estate, and they took lights, everybody was just putting on generator, chanana, 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 and there was light everywhere. And my house was a dark house in the middle of light. Nobody needed to tell me that people without generator don't cope here. Now, listen. I bought generator the second week. So, listen. I had the money to buy generator, but I did not have the mindset to buy generator. But when I got into an environment that inspired me, I had to allow my local Ikotu spirits and the demon mentality to bow to a superior idea. Number two, that same month, I bought DSTV. Why? Because everybody's house, you will see one round thing. Not this one. In those days, it was very big. Big. Everybody, and only our house did not have anything round. Nobody needed to tell me. Now, nobody preached to me. Oh. The environment preached to me. As a day, when you tell me somebody bought a brand new car, I will tell you, why all this waste of money? Uh -uh. There are some Tokumbo grade one. Ah, solid car. That if you buy it like this, you will still use it for 20 years. It was a mindset. If you've been blessed with today's message and you want to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, then repeat this after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you died and rose again for the remissions of my sins. With my heart, I believe unto righteousness. And with my mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Thank you for making me a new creation. I receive grace to walk in the path of righteousness. In Jesus' name, Amen. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Thank you for watching. To order for complete message of this broadcast, please call the numbers on your screen. Take of it, everybody, or visit our website, Facebook, and Twitter account.